So I'm pretty happy here in Studio One with my latest song. I'm happy with the mix and I feel ready to release it alongside some other songs, perhaps in an EP or an album. But even if I was just releasing this as a single, I would still use a feature in Studio One called the Project Page to both master it and prepare it for release. I can add it to a project from within the song here itself by going up to the top where it says song, clicking on that, then going down to add to project. Now, I've got a bunch of existing projects here, so I'm going to create a new one. So I'll click on new project. I'll change the default name to something incredibly creative like demo project. <laughs> and then I will change the sample rate to 48. I like to work in 48 kilohertz. Um, and this song was recorded with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. So I'll go ahead with that. Click on OK. And it immediately opens up the project page, which we will look at in more detail later on. But first of all, we want to answer this question. It says update mastering files. Do I want to create a mastering file is what it's really asking here. And I'm going to click on OK, explain what it's doing. It's going to open up the actual song here. And you can see that it's creating a WAV file here. Yeah, this is an uncompressed WAV file, really high quality. And we're going to be using that to do our mastering. OK, so it's going to use that from within the project page itself. So I'll let it just finish off with that. I'll keep waffling on and then it will open up the project and inform us that it's, it's, it's updated or created one mastering file. Click on OK. Now you can see that mastering file down here in the bottom left, and we'll be looking at this area a bit later on. And you can also see the actual song itself up here with the song title. What I want you to take note of at the moment is this little icon here. We will be talking about that icon and its significance a bit later on. Now let's say I'm not going to do anything more to this project at the moment i've got some other songs that i want to work on to add to it so i leave this interface okay so i'll just close down this project i'll save it before i go and i go back to my song perhaps i have christmas dinner and celebrate new year come back and i think you know what i actually think that that piano is a bit loud so i'll turn it down a little bit and i will save that okay job done i'll close that song off there and i'm done and at some time later i come back to work on my project again i want to add some new songs so i'm actually going to open up the project now i can see it in my recent files this here demo project i'll click on that it opens up the project and it's got this dialogue box which we'll talk about in a moment but first of all i want you to take note of that little icon that i talked about earlier can you see it up there it's now got a red mark on it and you can see down here also with the waveform there's a red mark that red mark indicates that there's been a change made to the song since we added it to the project studio one's really intelligent in this way i like the fact that it does this now it's asking us in this dialogue box hey do you want to update that mastering file and use the latest one based upon the changes you made and i'm going to click on ok it's going to open up the song again and again it's going to right away go through the process of creating that high quality wav file this is just one of the ways that you can actually add songs to a project in Studio One by actually, you know, adding an actual song itself, a Studio One song. But you could add songs as a WAV file from another door, for example. So we're going to be taking a look at that in a moment. We'll just wait for this to finish and it opens up then we can see in the project i'll just click on ok here just to close that box we can see there's no longer a red mark which indicates that we are working with the latest version of the mix hi folks i'm mike and i hope you're well welcome to the first part in a series of videos about the project page in studio one in this particular video we're going to be covering how you get your songs into the project page and then how you apply plugins for mastering the basic operation of the project page in future episodes we're going to be looking at automation we're going to be looking at adding metadata and we're also finally going to be looking at exporting your songs ready for release let's get started by looking at a different way that we can get some songs into our project so we previously imported a studio one song file into our project and we saw the benefits of that and we saw that it automatically created 
an uncompressed wave file for us to master with and we can also import audio files directly ourselves and not use song files you may have some audio files from you know another door or something like that for example now although there's many formats that we can import including some fairly low quality ones like mp3 i would encourage you to always try and import the highest quality quality audio file that you can now i'm going to be importing some wav files now which i could just directly drag in from my desktop and drop them here in the interface but i'm instead going to go up to the project menu up here click on that and then click on import file now it opens up this folder and i can see three songs which i want to add there so i'll select all of those and then click on open and you can see they've been added to my project both at the top here you can see the song titles and at the bottom you can see the waveforms okay and do note that these songs or these audio files have some different icons compared to the other one earlier we saw this icon and it changed to red when the file had been updated in studio One. but these are indicating that these are wave files that have been imported and of course as you may expect studio one cannot detect from these whether there's been an update to the mix or what have you so that's important to keep in mind if you choose this method now just a few quick basics you can easily change the order of these songs just by grabbing them dragging them around you can select them and hit delete on the keyboard to get rid of them i'll just undo that um you know the things you would expect with that also that order has changed at the bottom with the waveforms as you would expect as well there's a few things that this page this project page has in common also in terms of transport and things like that with studio one itself okay so the transport controls work you know in exactly the same way and you can also use keyboard shortcuts for example that i can use the space key here to start and stop play like so and also you can also zoom in and out in the same way you do with studio one so i like to use the keyboard shortcuts for that so i'm going to hit the e key to zoom in or the w key to zoom out again okay so all of those sort of things are very very sort of similar to studio one itself now that we've got our songs in there it's time to start mastering how do we go about doing that i want to quickly add here that this is not actually a mastering tutorial that could be a whole series in itself but for those of you who have already done some mastering i'm just going to show you how you can functionally do it from within the project page here itself i just want to make that really really clear to you now one of the things that i would do before i actually do start mastering is check the loudness information of these songs now i can actually already see here from the waveforms that these are well below clipping but if you wanted to check that there is this feature in studio one where you can go you've got the song selected you can see it says loudness information here i'll just click on that down arrow and it's gone ahead and it started to detect the loudness information and it's giving me information there um, about the loudness of the song including things which really interest me like the true peak values and the rms now there's a whole big discussion about um you know what are good values here i like to keep mine well below clipping but you know other people might just want to keep them a little bit below that's up to you um with with your sort of particular mastering methodology but it is important i think to go through this step just to make sure that you don't have a waveform which is already clipping okay there wouldn't be much point in mastering something which is already clipping and indeed if you don't feel it's just loud enough already or something's not great about it then you may want to go back and address that in the mix but just so you know that feature is there but of course once you've done that you'll want to start inserting effects to use within your mastering there's actually four places where we can add plugins in the project page but i'm going to focus on this one here this main area here this is where we insert plugins for any particular song because each song can have a different set of plugins on it so i've got the first song selected here you can see the song title at the top there and i'll go ahead and just click on the plus button to add a plugin i've got my favorites open here typically i may be adding pro q3 right at the beginning and i'll do something like you know a low cut there so i'll just do that quickly i would definitely do this while i was listening to the music and refining it but yeah just for um, demonstration purposes i've done that okay and then i may be adding something i don't know like uh i like um, ik multimedia's 
uh, tracks one one of my favorite plugins ever i may use something like isotopes maximizer um this is something i often use as you know one of the final points in my mastering chain now once you've sort of set up your mastering for that particular song you may find that you want to use some of these plugins on the other songs so remember if we go to these other songs those plugins are not there for those so let's say i like you know one of the settings say for this pro q3 with that low cut i did what i can do is just grab that plug in there and then just drag it and drop it onto another song okay and when we click on that song we can see it's there and not only is it there but it's there with the settings that we set up before with this okay so it hasn't just put in the plug in but it's actually transferred those settings across so that's one useful way if you want to get individual plugins with their settings into another song. Another thing you can do if you really sort of like a, a basic sort of setup here, something you could perhaps um, start off with on your other songs and then adapt to that song, you can create uh, an effects chain. Now you'll do that by clicking on this down arrow here. You can see I've got some here already and I'll go down to the bottom where it says store effects chain. I'll give it a name. Let's call it master one with a capital A and click on OK. So that is stored that. Now, if I go to another song, click on that down arrow again, and then we can see that um, stored effects chain there. I'll click on that and then all of the plugins appear with their settings there. OK, so that's a way that you can, you know, get plugins to go from one song to another another area where we can add plugins is in this master area down here you can see two boxes here one is for adding plugins pre-fader and the other one is post-fader in other words the ones that we add in in the top box here will not be affected by this master fader position but these ones in the bottom box will do let's just see that quickly in, in action so you can fully understand it i'm just going to add a plug-in in the bottom box here um, i'll just add in this level meter okay i'll just pop that up there so we can see it. i'll pin it up there in actual fact and you will notice when I play the song that you'll see some activity in the project page metering here and also the spectrum analysis. And you'll also see some activity in this level meter. Let's just see that. Travel back to understand. And if we turn this fader all the way down, yeah, to zero, then when I play the song again, you'll notice that there's no activity in, with any of this sort of metering here. Okay. Got a little this little bit of activity here which is a little bit different but yeah the main metering is not working there okay and that's because we've got the fader turned all the way down and all of these are post fader if i hold alt on my keyboard and drag this up to the pre-fader position i'll still leave this fade all the way down and i'll play the song and you can see there's metering activity here okay so this is you know the way this is working here now i have to say that for me personally i don't generally insert plugins here which actually change the sound in any way i could see someone adding a final sort of limiter or something in there that would make sense i tend to just still do that on individual songs but if you want to do that you could but i do find this area very useful for different kinds of metering and spectrum spectrum analysis that kind of thing okay if i don't want to use the default ones or the i should say the included ones here um with uh, the project page so that's mainly what i personally use that for let me know in the comments down below if you would actually use it for some plugins which actually change the sound in some way let's go ahead and remove that and look at another place where we can add plugins and that is on the listen bus okay now there's one main use for this okay which i can think of and what it's really intended for and that is for plugins which we want to use during the mastering process here and we want to be able to hear them if they do change the sound but when we finally mix down or export our songs we don't want these plugins to affect that and you may be scratching your head and thinking why on earth would you want to do that well the main example for this is with something like uh with sound reference the, the sound id reference plugin i should say okay <laughs> almost did get that out there's a, a number of different systems that uh we use for changing the sound so that we can fix problems audio problems with our room okay and this is the most popular i'll just click on that and insert that here now i've got this set up at the moment so it's making some adjustments for some headphones that i'm using but could be for your room 
So what we're doing with these plugins is we're accounting for the problems in the room with essentially an EQ curve here, but we don't want that to affect the sound for our end listeners because they're in different rooms, okay? So that's why we wouldn't actually want to apply this for a mix, and it's why it's called the Listen Bus. So that's the absolute essential parts of using the project page. If you want to watch the second part, which is going to be about automation, an incredibly important part of mastering, then click on this thumbnail right here. That is unless I haven't actually made that video yet, which should be soon. In the meantime, I'll put an incredibly useful other video there about something to do with Studio One. Go on, watch it.